Well, good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, and I hope everyone has had a really safe and good week, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you about several issues uh, this morning. First of all, I want to recognize our co-curricular programs that we offer for students in elementary, middle, and high schools. Uh, these programs are such as our choirs, our orchestras, our bands, and our athletic programs, as well as all the other programs we offer that have been very successful, like television production. And uh, these have been challenges, obviously. Our teachers and our students have experienced a lot of challenges during this pandemic. But what we should be very proud of is the successes that our programs have had uh, and our students have experienced those successes since last March. And so therefore, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. And a couple examples. We've had two of our athletic teams make it to the post competition. And uh, can you imagine our, our girls swim and dive program uh, were very successful last weekend at the state meet. Uh, for example, Sarah Krause and Josie Greers, along with Ashley Lund and uh, Taylor Scott, uh, in several events, whether it be individual or relay, finished second, third, so forth in the state, sixth in the state. Overall, the girls swim and dive uh, finished eighth in the state of Michigan, which is really outstanding. And I want to congratulate our student athletes in the swim dive program, our coaches, uh, cer and, and certainly our uh, parents who are involved in supporting their students in these events. Uh, very proud of our girls in, that, in the swim dive competition. Also, I want to recognize our varsity football team. Uh, I can't imagine ever remembering uh, a football team playing, high school football team playing uh, in the middle of January. Uh, but we did and we're undefeated, and we ended up playing in the semifinals, uh, Davidson High School. And I just want to again say how proud I am of our student athletes, our coaches who are involved, as well as uh, our parents and the involvement they have demonstrated in supporting our students and our coaches and our program. So thank you. Thanks to all of you and congratulations to all of you on an extremely successful season and so forth. So we're proud of you. We're proud of our, all of our co-curricular programs and our students and our coaches and our teachers and our parents who are involved. Uh, you're a strong highlight of our community. I also want to bring up the fact that, you know, this pandemic has created a lot of issues for people a lot of challenges for people. But there are some positives in this pandemic. One of the things is that our students and our employees have learned the life lesson of resiliency. I mean, we have had to be resilient in dealing with the changes that have occurred with this, the, with this pandemic. And that life skill, by the way, for our young people will carry them through their lives because they're gonna to have to be resilient and they're gonna to have to be able to uh, demonstrate persistence and so forth when they seek uh, the life goals that they've established for themselves. And things do change. And this pandemic is no exception. So I think there's at least one positive thing I can think of besides bringing families together in a very positive way is the life skill of resiliency that our students and our adults have had to learn. I want to bring to your attention that our Rockford High School students and staff are putting on the community blood drive next week, and you'll have an opportunity to learn about that through uh, an email that we'll be sending out, but also through this video, that on Wednesday, January 27th, uh, we'll have from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock, the students will be having the community blood drive at the community cabin. And then on Thursday, January 28th, from 1 to 7, uh, we'll continue to have that blood drive at the community cabin. So if you're interested in donating blood, I encourage you to follow up on that and be involved if you 
choose. I also want to reiterate again uh, what we're doing with our teaching and learning. You, you know, for the last three weeks, going on four, we've had our students back at the elementary level, de developmental kindergarten through uh, fifth grade, are uh, in person with their teachers. And so far, that's been going very well. We've had to have a couple of classes in some, a couple of the elementaries to be put on uh, remote learning because of contact with someone with uh, a positive uh, COVID test. But in fact, it has gone really well. And by the way, those uh, restrictions are for 10 days now rather than 14. Our secondary students who are in grades six through 12 have been on the hybrid model. And you know the hybrid model does get students back into the classroom with their teachers face to face for a couple of days a week as well as learning remotely. We've done this in a gradual way because of the concerns we've had for the potential spike in positive cases. And so we're in that remote plan. And that is, by the way, from feedback I've received from teachers and parents and students that it appears to be going well. But it is our goal our priority to bring grades six through 12 back in person five days a week in the classroom with teachers and students. And we will make that decision as we evaluate the data that comes in from the D Kent County Health Department. Uh, for example, and this has been a concern for, for us, is that right now based upon positive cases reported by the Kent County Health Department for communities I'm not talking about schools, but for communities. The Rockford is ranked number two in the county with positive cases. And I've, I've just got to see that number go down and so forth. And uh, because I want to make sure that when we return students back to the classroom full time, face to face, that we're doing so at the same time making sure that uh, the protocols that we follow will keep students safe. But I have to applaud our teachers, our building principals, our students, and our parents for the support you've demonstrated over the last several weeks after the holidays. And making our hybrid model work and making our face-to-face -face program work with our elementary students. And it is our goal and our priority is to see if we can bring students back at the secondary level six through 12 uh, by February 1st. But I'll have more information for you on that in our next video on January 27th. I also want to bring to your uh, attention that we are in the process now of making sure that our employees for the Rockford Public Schools, like all public schools and faith-based schools, are re scheduling their employees for the vaccines. And we are doing that right now with our Rockford employees because we're on that 1B designation uh, for essential employees in the state. Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm scheduled for this coming Friday to have my first shot for the vaccination and the second one will follow that three weeks later. And I'm looking forward to getting the shot. I mean, I believe this is the beginning of uh, closing this gap of positive cases and so forth, and hopefully returning all of us back to a sense of normalcy uh, in the next several months. So I've talked a lot about I talked a lot about a lot of things right now, but at the same time, I think it's important that we do our best to that we as a school district do our best to keep everyone informed. And I thank you very much for your involvement, for your comments, for your concerns, and for supporting your students and supporting your child's teachers. Uh, because we will get through this and we are making a difference. I wish you the very best for this coming week. And we'll talk to you Wednesday, next time, Wednesday, January 27th. Thank you.